Hi, I'm Doug, and I'm a tech support representative here at Atlantic British. In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about aesthetics. Uh, we have a uh, our D2, our Discovery 2 project behind us here, and one of the things you notice as these vehicles are getting older that some of the wearable items on the interior are starting to show their age, and so maybe it's time to update or improve the looks. So what we've done is put together, we have what we call a boot kit, and these are the two boots one at the bottom of the park brake lever and one at the bottom of the shifter for the transfer case and we've also added this uh, the horn button covers which are the hbd 2 as and they're a little different than the original they're smoother they just have a little bit of a textured finish to them uh, they don't have the dimple in the horn on them but they do definitely improve the look as over over time just the acid from your fingers and whatnot can make those horn buttons look pretty dingy so without having to replace the whole switch assembly and all you can just replace the buttons so what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to pop these in place basically all you're going to need for tool wise is maybe a plastic uh, trim tool small straight blade screwdriver and you're also going to need some super glue um, the way the, these attach to the bottom of the original frames is we're going to be cutting away the the boots and then super gluing the new boots in place all right what we're going to do is we're going to start with the horn buttons first one of the advantages to the setup on the D2 is that as long as the key is off, the horns aren't going to go off. Otherwise, this would be on some other vehicles, this would repeatedly be going off while you're changing this button. So essentially what we're going to do, if you look at the replacement button, which is essentially oriented just like the original, you just have four small tabs, one in each corner. They have a little knock on them so that they grab in place when you push it in. So all we're going to do is take the tool and work our way around it and lift that button right out of there. Now you might want to have something underneath the catch or just keep uh, your hand in a spot because you have a spring that's behind this behind a small plate that can twist and drop out of there once you get the button dislodged so you want to be careful keep an eye out for that spring and just keep working the corners and squeeze in a little bit and eventually she'll pop out of there so if you're careful, you'll see the spring is still in place. The upper plate can move around some, so we're going to be careful with that when we go to put the new button in. Essentially, you want to try to get the plate to drop into the button. It's usually it's best to start from one side and then lay it over. You'll squeeze in a little bit on those tabs. Usually the last one is a bit of a pain to get in, but once you insert the tool, there you go. So you've got your button in place, it looks a lot smoother, a lot neater. We're going to do, we'll do the same to the other button on the other side, and then we're going to go on to change the boots. Alright, so I think what we'll do is we'll start with the easy one, and that's going to be for the shifter on the transfer case. I'm just going to grab a handhold, and the knob will unscrew right off the end of the shaft. We'll set that aside. This will lift straight up. And we'll take our plastic tool. Alright, so here's the boot that we've taken out. And you can see you got wear and tear and grunge and whatnot built up on that. This end is getting kind of rough. So this is why we're replacing these just to upgrade the interior. Now this one essentially what you're going to be doing is, even from the factory, all they do is fold over the bottom lip and glue it directly to the plastic bezel that holds this in place. So, with a little bit of patience, you can actually just cut right around the top of this. You don't have to worry about this glued surface because you'll just glue right over the top of that. So don't worry about peeling this off or trying to deal with the glue. You trim this off right around the outer edge. The boot will come off the plastic. We're going to take the new boot and just essentially check the orient look at the orientation of this boot to the plastic. And you're going to essentially just glue it on. A little bit of very thin bead of super glue. Lay this down, just fold over the edge, hold it for five seconds, the glue's going to hold it in place, and just work your way all the way around to your boots on. And then reinstalling the boot, as I said, you know, you've watched your orientation, look to see where your seams were, set this back over, set that over the top, and then just get all the tabs lined in so that they pop in, and screw the knob back on. Now you see the bottom of the knob, this has a groove all the way around, this is for this upper lip of the boot to set in place. So we'll just screw that on until it seats, 
it's going to get a little tight. And essentially, when we're done, we got it in fairly tight. We want to make sure that it's in the position it was in as it came from the factory with it low, neutral, and high, with low being the indicator on top. And we'll go one more turn to give it good and tight. And you can start that upper piece all the way around. You can actually pull, it's fairly elastic. The new boot will be the same. You just make sure you're in that groove all the way around. Okay, so that's the transfer case boot. Now what we're gonna do, this one's a little bit harder, but not all that bad. You take your plastic trim tool, and you're gonna just very gently lift the outer bezel off of the window switch assembly. And this does just lift out. There's no screws, no clips. It's just these pins drop into the switch itself to hold it in place. Then you got four Phillips screws. Now our instructions that you're going to get with this kit don't mention about taking this bezel out, but I have found that the job is a lot easier when you do move it out of the way. Plus the fact is you have a lot less chance of damaging the plastic on the edge of the switch assembly when you're trying to get this boot out. The boot uses a metal bracket sort of spring-loaded to lift it out of there and it can catch the edge of the plastic and end up breaking it. So we've just taken the screws out. Let's move them out of the way so they don't get lost. That moves that. Let's see if we can find a way to have that stay. Then the metal boot, you're going to see the bracket, you're just going to push down. Probably easier with the plastic. I'm just going to push down and unhook. And it's easier just to let it pop inside. You lift up. Now there's a, a pin where the cable attaches to it, a little clip on it, and you may catch it when you're trying to remove this. So just take that in mind that that's probably what you're caught on. So you just need to work out and around it. And you'll see now the metal bracket is just a little nylon, sort of a straw that lines it up. And you can spread that out so that you can get over the knob of the park brake. And you have a, a ring right here. It's just a large o-ring and that's what holds the boot in the groove at the base of the handle. So there's your o-ring right there and you can just leave that right on the handle. And then that'll allow you just to peel this off. Now again, before you take it off the bracket, look at the orientation as far as any seams, any openings, any grooves, anything that's in this is going to give you a hint that you want to put it back on in the same direction. And essentially we can just slide this off and this will just slide down now you'll see at the bottom here what they do is there's a flap right here and this flap is going to fold over the middle bracket just the way it is here and the same on the sides where it's folded over and that's essentially how you're going to reattach the new one. You're going to run a bead of super glue along the new one, fold the flap over, and you probably want to take a measurement as far as the, the width of this flap against the new one. You can put a chalk line on there. That gives you a fold line. I mean, it's all a matter of how exacting you want to be. But, again, you'll see the seam is on the side that splits. You have a flap on the side here you're going to glue, a flap on the bottom, and then a flap on the, the other side. But once you've done that and the glue is set up and they, you can use super glue, it won't affect the it won't affect the material of the boot. Matter of fact, it's designed for it. Once that sets up in place and most super glues are set up within 15 to 30 seconds, you're ready to put your boot back in. Same thing. We want to make take that little nylon straw that's in there. Pop that together. 
just slide that over again with the seam down. Because we don't really need to look at the seam. Yep. Okay. Let's put it on the right way. Let's do that. Now the new boot is not going to have an indentation on it or any any witness mark that'll tell you where to put the o-ring so if you remember when we took it down there was a little bit more than a quarter of an inch of the material past the groove in the handle so we're just going to work that down so that we have about that amount of material just past the bottom of the handle Make sure that we've got that all the way around. And if you get a little bit more or a little bit less, it's not going to make any real big difference on it. We'll just set it up so that the boot's going to sit right. Get a nice flexible o-ring. We'll start at the bottom first. And then pull and walk it until it sits in its groove. All right, and then we pull down. Now we're reusing the old boot because essentially this is just as an example. This is um, we're not really replacing the boot in this unit. As you can see, <laughs> it does need it, as a lot of them do at this point. So then the bracket with the little loop on it, or with the nylon straw, that's going to go to the bottom, and you'll see basically what you have with this little angle is that angle sits against the lip at the bottom of the of the console and should go forward a little bit then this just flexes in and pushes in and you'll notice with this switch assembly out of the way this is just so much easier and there you are it's basically back in place and all you need to do is take your switch pack screw it back on put your cover back on you're done so at the end you have new horn buttons new boot new boot and it improves the interior looks of your vehicle quite a bit. So when you're ready to for a little weekend, it's not even really a weekend project. As you can see, it's a fairly easy kit to change over. It makes a huge difference with how the interior looks on the vehicle. So when you're ready to do so, give a call to any of our knowledgeable salesmen at 1-800-533-2210. And thanks for watching.